how do you tell a story in a way that can actually shift people's understanding and perception about uh, a subject, um, even when it's a subject that it's that people come with with so many clear ideas about uh, and so many biases um, and so much uh, political conviction. Um, what are, what is um, you know, we all, I think you're all here because you believe the power of storytelling, right? You believe that storytelling is an incredible, uh, um, you know, old part of, how, of, of human experience and how we share human experience and how we build our narratives about who we are, what society we are in, and, and where we live. And, and so one of the things that we discussed is, is this question of, of vulnerability. And what what does that mean? Well, like why why is it why is it so powerful to experience someone being vulnerable, and why is that effective? Um, and obviously, I'm not a psychologist, so <laughs> forgive me here. This is all coming from a as from a storyteller point of view. Um, you know, we are all um, so accustomed, and this is all obviously. There's a bias here, which is a bias of someone who works on an issue that is particularly controversial and that people have very strong feelings about. So it, it's possible that some of the stories you're telling, that isn't going to be such a big element. But um, in, in the issue of, of, of the Middle East, um, in Israel and Palestine in particular, um, it's, there is this need for people to portray themselves as very strong and clear of what they believe in and who they are and the sense of like not showing um, weakness, um, not showing any uh, points of uh, where people can have leverage over you has become over and over sort of um, a reinforced self-defense that people have. And it's been tremendously powerful to, to see when you have the time, and this is a key part of documentary filmmaker filmmaking that it's unique to its form uh, versus, let's say, more broadcast uh, journalism form. So when you have the time, and you're not just like parachuting in like so many journalists do in Israel and Palestine or in other conflict zones or in other areas of the world, and you just sit them down and you want a bite from them and you want something quick and you want that you know 30 second thing that is going to sort of um, fit into your pre-existing story that you already landed knowing you want to make. Um, when you don't appear there that way, when you actually sit down with people with the interest of actually understanding their experience, you will find that um, there is a moment when they become vulnerable and, and they open up some of their own doubts and they open up to some of their questioning about themselves. Um, and the sort of best example that I have of that Control Room has as one of its main characters, and I'm going to use character here, this is all real people, but when I'm making the films, I, they become characters for me, um, is uh, Lieutenant Josh Rushing. And he is um, a Marine, U.S. Marine officer, who was sent to Doha, Qatar, to be a representative of uh, the U.S. Um, uh, military towards uh, the media that all got um, uh, put together in this uh, thing called Central Command, which uh, used to be actually the main military headquarters of the United States in the Middle East, and during the war in Iraq in 2003, became also the media headquarters. So Josh Rushing was one of the Marine officers representing the story of what was happening in the war to this journalist. And he was actually put in charge, just by mere coincidence, because he didn't have any expertise or skills for that, he was put in charge of the um, uh, Arabic language journalists. So Al Jazeera, Al Arabiya, the reporters were actually, he was supposed to tell them the story. So we actually filmed him over the course of a month as he was interacting with this journalist, telling them the story of the military, of what was happening. Um, and he, at one point in the film, which is this vulnerable moment, which is really the key turning point of the film. That is like the story of the film is encapsulated in that one moment and it's a sit down interview it's boring as hell it looks <laughs> terrible like it's just like there's nothing to it except that he in that moment he's, he he's, he tells a story and the story he tells is of how um you know the about three days before 
I don't know how much you remember of the war, but there was this big moment when um, there was the, the American um, prisoners of war um, who were, um, you know, sort of, uh, you know, in being interrogated. And it was this very powerful moment of like um, uh, the Iraqi, uh, uh, you know, in information officers were, were like, you know, putting the microphone in front of these this prisoners of war, American prisoners of war, and they were terrified. You could see they were terrified. And it was like, you know, it pulled your heartstrings. And this is the expression he says. It pulls your heartstrings. It pulled my heartstrings to see that. But then, yesterday, I was, you know, I entered into the Al Arabiya office, um, and the reporters there were watching this footage of all of these Iraqi children and mothers who had been shot, and some of them had just, you know, lost people and loved ones, and they were crying. And I didn't feel as sad. I didn't feel it. I just couldn't. I just couldn't empathize. And he said, and that made me feel sick on my stomach when I realized that I did not. I simply did not empathize with those people the way I did with that one. And that marked a moment of deep vulnerability, right? For this is a US Marine officer. He was he's he's representing, you know, the American military. And he is realizing that his ability to empathize with one side is completely different than his ability to empathize with another one and he notices that that's a problem and he's willing to share it. And that then marks a whole sort of different journey that he enters into that marks the second half of the film. And, and, and that, that is the kind of moment, like, as you follow um, a character through, through a journey, through a trajectory, that I think um, keeping an eye out for uh, and, and, and building the relationship of trust so that person is willing to share that with you uh, is key. So